Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Four, You'll four, never four, have me, sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. This is Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. The podcast where back of house Ali and front of house Marco talk food and drink. Heads up. These two spent decades in restaurants, so some mature content and language is bound to come up. Get ready for Eat and Drink. Forks up. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, I just had said to Ali, I just like a little bit drizzled on my cheese, and we were laughing about it. He's um, very high maintenance. Uh, welcome to Eat and Drink, the podcast. That's Marco over there. And that's Ali Hassan. Joey Drizzle over, over here. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got an, a nice little show. I feel like I put a lot of effort into it, and you put a minimal effort well, into it. Okay. Okay, okay, here we go. This is going to be one of those shows where people are going to hate me, and as always, they're going to love you. It's going to be the wine and cheese show. For that. Yes. Are you cool that I mentioned your food item? It's a little bit now. of a... Yeah, buried the lead there. I mean, yeah, you. Well, no, you did the opposite. You, uh, you. Uh, what's the opposite of burying the lead? You, you ruin the suspense. I guess, but anyway, the, yeah, the reason good. I wanted to do wine was you said you're going to do cheese. I won't say yeah. exactly what you're doing with cheese. So just to keep Please. that mystery, uh, you, you know. tell them what kind of cheese already. One minute in the podcast. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. Oh, we can't. could be talking about cheddar. Nobody knows. Whoa, the mystery still there. Oh, Listen, unbelievable. I was very happy when you said, I'm going to bring cheese, because I was like, all right, if you're going to bring cheese, I'm going to talk about wine. And I want to just focus on a practical guide to wine, because I was just talking with some someone last week, and they were like, what do you do when you're in a restaurant and they've got 400 pages of wine? And I've got so many people that I speak to who are so afraid of wines, because there's this whole you know, snobbiness when it comes to wine or this like expertise some people have when it comes to wine. Listen, but you, you have to sympathize. You ever, have you gone to buy a, a Band-Aid recently? Right. Or, or shampoo? Sure. I mean, that's all in one aisle and it's still insane. You're like, I don't, do I need this aloe in my condition? Right. I don't need any shampoo. But you know, like the Band-Aids are like 43 types of yeah. Band-Aids. So wine times 100. Well, right? you don't like, you, so you, it's really quite a world out there. You bring up a very fascinating point because yes, in North America we have an abundance of varieties of things. I just want to say that in whatever 40 50 episodes you've never called any of my points fascinating. So well, I just need to sit in this for a moment. Okay, okay back I'll to you. Sorry. Yeah. Um so in Europe you go and there's like three there's three types of band-aids and there's so many wines. And the average European is not afraid of wines or ordering wine. Sure. or dealing. It's in North America that we're like, oh, there's this mystique. What if I go to a restaurant? So I'm going to just give you. And, and some of you a wine, uh, you know, not just the sommeliers, but you wine snobs, you capitalize sure. on that uh, sure. on that fear. Mm-hmm. And that's how you uh, you charge like uh, 250 bucks for like a wine tasting class. Yeah, and stuff like 450. That. My wife was like, Ooh. I want to take a class. And I'm like, how long you, how what, what like how much is going to be what's it going to be he's like they're all like about 450 i go for 450 i can go buy a whole bunch of wines yeah and we can just do the research on the thing and i'll tell you about grape varietals it's not that hard like you know what do you need do you want to be a sommelier where you're like making sure your palate is so crisp that you can taste every note of a wine well, or you just want to know a little bit about wines so You're like, such an oppressive husband but i do feel that 450 <laughs> is quite a bit it's quite it's too wow. much i mean yeah. you're you're capable when it comes to wine, I, I'm assuming. I'm not, right? You know what? I My problem is I don't enjoy wine the way I enjoy beer and cocktails. Fair. Um, so I didn't – the same way like with dessert. I never dove into it the way I could have. Okay. But I definitely learned the basics so yeah. that I'm comfortable, so that I know which varietals can go with which food. Sure. And I once went to – one of the best things I, that ever happened – like, this is going back more than a decade mm-hmm. – there's a chef. Uh, he's much more than a chef now, but his name is Vikram Vidj. Yes, out of uh, out of uh, Vancouver. Mm-hmm. He was on you know Dragons Den, uh-huh. Dragons Den. Uh, the idea that uh, you know gave birth to uh, Shark, Shark Tank. Tank yes. By the way, came from Canada first. Just want to throw that not, out there. Not, he, not the UK. There wasn't a UK version. Hey man, let's just uh, stay with my version. All right, all right. Okay, I don't know who gave it to us. Okay, the point is, America. We had it before you. Okay? Sure. We just we, we we don't have these. Uh, we, we, there's not that much to. 
compete with in the U.S. Or let's enough, give a, let, let us have that, Marco, right. for God's sake, trampling on my... I know you Sorry. were just in Florida, but if you could just be a No, I'm just Canadian trying to... Listen, if you're gonna if you're going to falsify things and yeah. think I'm not going to call you on it, just know I'm going to The amount of you. things I let slide that come out of your mouth. Oh, right, please. Anyways, go back. Vic, 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 so, Vic so Vicar Vince, you know, we, I, I was helping him in a, in a class in Montreal. There's a great... Nice uh, guy. Uh, he was, Whoa. and then I think uh, things have gotten sure. a little... Anyway, listen. Don't worry. He's fine. Okay. He's fine. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so he was lovely in this class. Okay. This was a long time ago. This was before Dragon's Day. Right. This is before. I mean, this was just a guy who was like a, a touring chef. He had cookbooks. He get, Did he so, still wear the glasses, the funky glasses? Uh, no, or, but no. maybe a bit of a flowing scarf okay. was on. Okay. But not the glasses yet. He wasn't Dragon Vikram. Okay. Yet, okay. So he, you know, I, uh, he's, he's, he's doing, he's teaching a cooking class. My friend Jonathan Chung owns a cookbook store in Westmount in Montreal, Bon Appetit Cookbooks. If you need a cookbook and you don't know where to find it, you're looking for a specific cookbook, go there. Go there. Jonathan and I'm sure they have an online store that you can yeah. order online. Yeah. Bon Appetit Cookbooks in Montreal. There you go. So he has classes in the back a lot. I would teach classes once in a while. So he said, Vikram's coming. Do you want to help him out in the class? Absolutely. Just a chance to meet a great chef who's doing very creative things with Indian food. So anyway, you know, there's a, you know, these 20 very wealthy women from Westmount. Primarily, that's the demographic of the class. Sure. One of them asks, what wine could go well with this food? Right. And he says, listen, you've just watched me put 12 different spices plus garlic and ginger and tomato and two different types of herbs in this curry. If you think that there is a wine that pairs perfectly with all that, you're out of your goddamn mind. Right. And she was like, uh, nobody's ever spoken to me. She was, right. she was, you know, a little bit uh, taken aback by mm. that. But he's very honest and straightforward. He's very like, there's no, the best, the best wine with Indian food is a beer. Okay? There you go. There, that's what he said. That said, he said there are wines that can go generally well, and he is a trained sommelier. Oh, there you so go. to hear a trained sommelier. Get rid of the snobbery in yes. front of some of the more, you know, this is a very wealthy clientele. Yeah. I just loved it. And and that's how I've operated ever since, that we don't have to get into the, I can really taste the cocoa and the lavender. Right. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. All right. Get the hell out of yeah. here. I feel like this. We're, and you know, we're in a world now where it doesn't have to be reds with meat. No. And it doesn't no. Have, right? And that's Fish what I want to talk white. about. Exactly. exactly. So me, I set you up. You you hit the home. All right. So here's the thing when it comes to wine. First of all, wine's been around since 6,000, 7,000 BC. So there's a lot of history, a lot of, you know, connection Jesus to religion. Jesus was drunk quite often. A lot of people you don't know, talk about that. The ancient Egyptians used wine and ceremonies for their gods and whatnot. So we're talking like it's been around. So. When you go to the hospital because you have an ailment, you're not expected to know everything a doctor knows. You ask the doctor, you tell the doctor your symptoms, and the doctor is able to hopefully, he or she, figure out what, what's going on, right? If you go to a restaurant that has a sommelier, look at it like that. This person has trained in wine knowledge, and you should be able to say, this is the type of wine I like. And the nice thing is they're not in Big Pharma's pocket. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> gonna, anyway, we hope, right? <laughs> Along with your budget, they should be able to direct you to a wine. So here's what I would say. Folks, just have confidence when you're ordering wine at a restaurant. All you need to know is what you like or what you don't like. And if you don't know, go and buy some classic wines and try them at home. Buy a Merlot, buy a Pinot Noir, buy a an Italian red or Californian red and see which ones of those really hit your palate. Same with whites. Buy a Pinot Grigio, buy a Sauvignon Blanc, buy, just go into a wine store or liquor store and say, hey, can you give me three bottles of wines that are very popular so I can taste them that are vastly different? So once you know what you like, can yes. Can I just say one thing yes. on that note? I think the research, independent research element is important. Yeah. Because I have been to... Uh, a, 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 a liquor store, wine sure. store, where I was guided in one direction, yeah. and then I've been guided in the very opposite sure. direction. When I was like, what goes well with spicy food? Now, we're yeah. going back about 20 years. Sure. So wine knowledge wasn't where it was. But an employee there said, oh, you want a very, like, a light wine. You want a Bordeaux. Right. To... And then somebody else on a different occasion said, you want a strong wine to stand up to the spices. You want something like a Gewurztraminer or, sure. or a Riesling. You want a, a bold, strong-tasting wine. So And so 
sometimes even the employees may not know exactly, Fair especially enough. when you're coming from something yeah. that they're not trained in. Uh, once, uh, you know, in a grocery store here, the, this guy told me, wearing his white coat, Deals in vegetables. Yeah. I said, do you have cilantro? He goes, no, but we have parsley. It's pretty much the same thing. Right, and you I knew. Can imagine right. the nerve of this idiot. Here's anyway. my, here's, before I continue, I'm just going to say this. Don't worry about what wine pairs well with what food. Take that off your mind. Don't think of it These that These are way. antiquated ideas. I, I wouldn't even say it's antiquated. Some people, that's important. For me, it's not. Mm. I order the wine that I want. And I don't care if it disagrees with the classic knowledge of, you know, with fish, you should have white. If I want a red, I want a, I want a red with whatever I'm having. Here's what I want to compare something to. Beer. People know the beers they like and they know the beers they don't like. They don't go into a bar or a restaurant and, and are worried about ordering the wrong beer. I know that I like a Pilsner. I like a good Pilsner. Sure. I like an ale and I like a lager. I'm not into... I'm not that into... That said, if you go into a restaurant and you order a Coors Light, you know, go home. Have some respect no, for No, I disagree. If you no, like Coors Light... No. no. Listen. <laughs> right, we're going to open joking. up a, a kettle I, of fish. A huge, huge kettle of fish. But I don't... I know what I don't like. I don't like wheat beers. I don't like cloudy beers. And I don't like Rattlers. So... I know what I don't. If I go to a restaurant and there's a list of beers and I don't know which one to pick, I'll say to them, hey, do you have a good Pilsner? No. Do you have a, an ale or a lager? Do you have a lighter beer? Or do you have something that's... And they'll be like, oh, we've got this, that, and the other. And then I'll choose. Yeah. It's the same with wine. Approach wine as you would beer. It's just grape juice that has been fermented, folks. All right? So... Wow. Some sommeliers are just punching themselves in the face listening to this. Let them because let here's them, the thing. Let them. Let them. This let is them. a practical guide to take to demystify wine for the average person who fears ordering wine. Yeah. So here's what you're going to do. I love it. And you're, you're really doing a great job in breaking it down. Thank Approach you. Approach wine like beer is yeah. a great uh, like mantra sort sure. of. Yeah, yeah. So you go into a restaurant and you're like, okay, we're in an Italian restaurant. I would recommend go for an Italian wine. Because, generally speaking, the wines of the country will pair well with the food. You're in a restaurant that caters to everyone. All foods. There's no one food. What wine are you going to get? You have a sommelier. You tell them what you like. And you tell them what you don't like. I don't like strong wines that are really tannin or really heavy or really hearty. I like a wine that's a little bit more velvety. Or I like a very crisp wine. Or I like a wine that has, you know, a light buttery feel. They should be able to direct you. Now, let's say it's not a Somalia. You're with some friends. Maybe you're with a client, and it's up to you to choose a wine. What do you do in that case? Let me ask you this. What wines do you generally defer to when you're having a wine? New World. Okay. Don't like Old World wines. You don't, So eh? that's my first. No, so no French, no Italian. So Look, I've had a few Barolos I've loved. I've oh, had see? a few Chiantis I love. But generally, Australian wines. Okay. Uh, I just want to, before you go on, Old World means yes, Europe. New World means uh, countries that are not in Europe where, they, where they've been making wine for years and years and years. That said, Georgia in the former Soviet yeah. Union is the first place supposedly where wine was uh, found or wine techniques. But China also has like 6,000 BC. So, you know, is China part of the old world or the new world? We don't really know about Chinese wines. They're not popular as mm. French wines. So generally speaking, when you're talking old world, Europe, New World, or other places like Australia, South America, uh, California, or North America. South so, Africa. South Africa, thank you. So, yeah. Okay, so you prefer New World wines? I do. Now, not to say I, I've never had an Old World, but I think that's, I don't judge. that's, my, first, that's my first thing. Okay, but it's great. So this. already you know, yeah, yeah. if yep. you're going to select a wine, it's going to probably be New World. Right. Great. If I have a menu and there's like 100, I can already, okay, these 50 out. Great. Let me just focus on Australia or Chile or Argentina. Sure. Um, I like Shiraz. Great. I like Cabernet Sauvignon. Wonderful. And uh, and what don't you like? Listen, man, I had a Valpolicella once. Really? That was basically balsamic vinegar. Oh. And it has gone and buried that itself in the back of my head, like the way the Southern Comfort did at age sixteen. Okay. That I threw up in the sure. limo on the way sure. to my grad. I mean. Every time I try Valpolicella, it's not your thing. It's still I get a little bit of balsamic All right. vinegar. And All people right. are like, "This is terrific." I'm like, "I don't know. I feel like I should be dipping bread." It, in this. And here's something fascinating, folks: 
The wines Ali hates are some of the wines I love. Yeah. And that's what makes wine so great. It's distinctive for everybody's palate. I also love, if I'm going to have a white Zinfandel, give me Ernest and Julio Gallo. I don't care what you think of it. Mm. I don't care what you think of that company. I don't care what you think of me. I love their white Zinfandel. That's the one I'll what pick up there. What a defensive way to order a wine. Huh? Listen. Do you say that to the waiter when no, you order it to him? Because people will, will poo-poo that. They'll they'll look down on, oh, you like a white Zinfandel. It's just, what is it? Is it very pedestrian? It's like it's a run-of-the-mill. A, a white Zinfandel is, you know. No, kind of, Ernest and Julio Gallo. I well, mean, what is their. They're one of the largest um, makers of wine in the United States. Okay. They're California-based. and so, so you're ordering a Budweiser of wine. Is that yeah, what they do. They, okay. they, they, I think they produce some great wines, and I think, oh, you know, in the past they were looked at very affordable wines or cheaper wines, and so they have this connotation where Ernest and Julio Gallo isn't like a Gaia in in in, in uh, from Italian wines. It, it has doesn't necessarily have a prestigious label, hmm. but that doesn't matter to me. I don't care. So I'm paying seven dollars for a, a bottle of wine or a two liter uh, cask of wine from them. That's my business. Hmm. So. I like it. That's anyway. my business is a great line. Yeah, and that's what you should say in a restaurant if yeah. anyone gives you attitude. No, no, Maybe listen. even before they give you yeah. attitude. I'm going to order the wine. That's my business. That's my business. I like it. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> if you take nothing else from today's episode, <laughs> that's my business. That's my business. So you know what? You, you like new world wines. So yeah. that's already, some people like old world wines. Some people will be like, you know what? I want to try French wines. All right, explore, dive in there. Yeah. Right? In the white, in the world of white, however. Yeah. Riesling, Gewurztraminer, yes. and Pinot Grigios. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Those are your wines. That's great. Yeah. That's all you need to know. If you know nothing else, if you know you like those three wines and you go to a restaurant and they don't have those three wines in the restaurant, you can say to them, listen, what do you have that's like a Pinot, uh, Pinot Grigio yeah. or a Riesling? And hopefully someone there can say, oh, you know what? This one is kind of like cross between the two or this one is closer to this or that, right? Yes. And then that can guide you. And then For you can sure. be like, then let me try that. But I will reiterate one yes. thing that I said sure. earlier. Do a little bit of independent research. Go to some website that does exactly what Marco did for you, which is break things down a little bit. Because a lot of waiters are bullshitting. Oh, Come on. 100%. Right? Just 100%. Stuff that they, they, they prey on your ignorance. They're like, oh, this is exactly like that. And or, it's not. Or they'll read on the bottle. Or yeah. I don't even think you have to do the research. If you're in a restaurant. And they don't have what you want. And you ask the waiter, and the waiter's like, you're like, mm, she or he's kind of bullshitting me right now. Pull out your phone and look at one of the wines and see if it's in your price point. Is this a wine I'll enjoy? Sure. Know what you like. Know what you don't like. Hopefully, you're in a decent restaurant when you tell them what I like and what I don't like. When someone comes to me in the restaurant and says, I like French wines. I notice you have no French wines on there. I'll say, what kind of wines do you like? And they're like, I like a more full-bodied wine. Mm. And I'm like, oh, okay, so maybe the Ripasso or the Barbaresco is going to be something that's going to speak to you more, right? I can usually guide them. And it doesn't hurt to ask for a sample. If those wines, if they're available by the glass, you can always ask the waiter, can I have a taste of this wine and that wine just to see which one resonates with me more? There's nothing wrong with that. Sure. Yeah. So that's all you got to do. Know the wines you like. I love a California wine. Like, you know, I love Old World and I love New World. I know Italian wines because I was a tour guide in Italian regions. We'll talk about grape varietals another time. We kind of went into a bit of a, a song and dance about your experience with that chef that ate away some of my time. But... <laughs> Hey, you know what? Why don't you eat some of my time? Go it's ahead, my business. Your... <laughs> it's my business, all right? No, because I want to talk about one other aspect before. So don't worry about grape varietals. Generally speaking, if you do like wine, you'll probably like things in that grape varietal. So for example, just to get a little bit specific, when we're looking at Italian wines, a lot of people know Chianti. Chianti is a region of Italy in Tuscany. Their grape varietal, so their type of grape that is known in that region, is the Sangiovese mm. grape. And the Sangiovese, which comes from the Latin meaning the blood of Jupiter, pretty cool name. Okay, great. Um, the Sangiovese wine, if, if a bottle of, in order for it to be a bottle of Chianti, it has to have 80% of that wine has to be Sangiovese. And then they'll blend it with Merlot and whatnot. But you can have up to 100% of that wine Sangiovese. So if you like Chianti and you know that the grape that they use is predominantly Sangiovese, good chance you're going to like other wines that have Sangiovese in it. So you can buy wines that are just Sangiovese that aren't Chianti, and you're going to like that. So once you know the wine you like, for example, Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio is a white from northern Italy, and it is the name of the grape too. If you like a Pinot Grigio... Chances are you're going to like 
all Pinot Grigios. So there you go, or blends with Pinot Grigio in it. Now, before I leave our wine talk, I want to talk about when you order a bottle, what happens and what you should be looking for. That's your business, bud. That's my business. So let's say we order a bottle of wine. So what's what's a wine that you really enjoy? A uh, red. Like a let's J. Lore. A... Let's go with it. Like a J. Lore, if that's on the uh, on the menu. What's a J. Lore? J. Lore is an Australian. Sometimes it's a Shiraz Cab Sauv blend. Uh, it's always going to be great. And that's an example of me. I don't know this wine, but let's say I've ordered this wine. It comes to me. So the waiter's bringing me the wine. They present the wine. In other words, they're showing me the wine. This is your opportunity to confirm that the waiter didn't fuck up. Because sometimes you'll order something. The waiter might be distracted. They may not hear. They might be just dim punched it wrong in the computer, and they're bringing you wine. They present the wine. They show you the bottle. Take a look. What you're looking for here is the name. So J. Lore, is that what it's J. called? J. Lore, L-O-H-R. J. Lore, you look for J. Lore, and maybe the year, because the year will often indicate the price of the wine. Of course. So if you're ordering a J. Lore uh, 2017, it's going to be one price. If it's a 2013, it's might be much more, right? So you're just looking for those two things. And then once you say yes you've pretty much bought the bottle. So if that waiter brings you a bottle of wine and they've made a mistake and you say yes because you didn't bother to look at those two or three things, chances are you're going to pay for that bottle once Mm -hmm. it's open and poured. Here's an interesting thing that happens to me in restaurants when I'm serving wine. I'll present it and I can always tell who's astute because they'll be like, oh, it says 2016. I thought it said 2015 on the menu. Sometimes we'll run out of the 2015 and we'll sub Speaking in. Speaking of bullshitters. Yeah. yeah. And that's just what the, poli- the, the boss will be like, oh, we're out of the 2015, just use the 2016. And there should be a price change when you do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But restaurants do it all the time. And I'm always impressed by someone who goes, oh, it's a 2015? I thought it was 2016. And I'm then like, you go, you caught me. I'm, I'm bullshitting. Like, it's their uh, business, the man. It's their yeah. business. So you do that. The waiter's going to open the wine and probably, if it has a cork, put the cork in front of you. Now, some people are snobby about wines that don't have corks, that are just twist-offs. Twist-offs, in my opinion, are just as good as corks. Some people say they preserve the wine better. There's a cork shortage in any case. So uh, you've got to get used to this uh, twist-off world we're living in now. So what do you do with the cork that's in front of you? You chew on it. You you try to suck out any lit. No? Just ignore it. Don't even bother. Some people will sniff the cork. Sniffing the cork just says you're an asshole. Right. Just if the cork is dust or so, if it looks like something's wrong, there's a mushroom growing in the cork, that's when you question it. But otherwise, you don't have to play with the cork. It's there. It's more ceremonial. Ignore that part. Now, Buddy is going to put a little taste of wine, a little drip of wine in your glass. Generally speaking, it's going to be the host glass. Now, let's say I ordered that wine. But I wasn't familiar with it, but I know that Ali likes that wine, is familiar with it, and we're at, we're at a, a casual dinner. I might say, let him taste it. He's familiar with this wine. And I would allow for Ali to taste it, who could then say, this is great. Now, you're going to get the wine, a little drop in your glass, and customary, what you would do is you would tilt the glass and, and hold it in front of a white surface to look at the color of the wine. It's more, once again, just to see how pretty the color is. Some people will then swirl the wine to aerate it. I don't think you have to do it. All you have to do once the drip is in your glass is give it a taste. You should be able to taste right away if the wine tastes like garbage or if it's great. You don't believe in aerating wines. I thought I, you of all people. Not for the taste. For the taste. For okay, the taste, okay, I don't I don't think you need to aerate it. Some okay. people, you know, you, they'll, they'll spin it. They'll swirl it. They'll do like a, a song and dance above sure, their head. Sure, you don't sure, have sure. to do that. Okay. You really don't. It's it's in your glass, especially because generally speaking, people who are ordering a bottle of wine, you know, they're not ordering a $250 bottle of wine where you want to do that and be more ceremonious. It's a $50 bottle of wine. You don't need to go through that song and dance. Right? Not even you don't, You're not dipping your nose in that glass, anything like that? You're not... You're just No, because is... here's the thing. You're dipping your nose in the glass more just out of, in my opinion out of interest of the notes of the wine. Mm. It's not going to tell you if the wine is good or sure. bad. If you know that wine already, you're not, you don't need to. But do like if you bring the wine to your nose as you're bringing it and you smell vinegar, okay, mm. that's one sense saying uh, something might be up with this wine. You taste it. You should know right away if it's good or not. And then you say, all right, you can pour. But it's at that moment too, you should know if the wine is garbage and say, ah, uh, there might be a problem with this. Can you get the... The manager to taste it is what I would say. Can you get someone else to taste this to make sure this wine is fine? Because to me, it tastes a little off. And if it's off, they should should bring you a new bottle. Now, I've opened thousands of bottles of wine and poured thousands. Maybe I've served five bottles that were off. Unbelievable. So that Valpolicella I had, 
It's like a shooting star that I got. A, it could a, be. I had one bottle of wine. It was a very expensive bottle of wine. And the guy was being a bit of a snit. And he's like, mm, this wine is off. We took it to the back. We tasted it. It was off. There was a crack in the top of the bottle that's covered by the foil. Oh, my God. So it had been cracked when it had been put away. So air got to oh, it. And so he wasn't being he was he, he knew what he was doing. And I was like, my opinion changed of okay. that person. Okay. So generally speaking, you're, you're most likely not going to get a bad bottle of wine, but you should be able to taste it right away. And if you're a little bit suspect, you can always say, uh, if I was a little bit suspect, if I ordered a bottle of wine and I tasted it, I was a little bit suspect and I know you were at the table with me. I'm like, can you pour him a little taste? I, it feels a little bit off to me. And I would, I would defer to see if you agree, if you're like, no, Marco, you're, you're an idiot. This is fine. Right. Yeah. And that's it. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be. A song and dance can be just make it casual. And the more casual they make it, the more the waiter's going to think, oh, this person knows what they're doing. When mm -hmm. people, when, when I'm serving somebody and they make it like, oh, like, let me snort this one. Shoving and they're sniffing the three times like, nostril. dude, yeah. I got to serve other tables. Do you know it or do you not? <laughs> yeah. And once again, don't be afraid when you open up a wine, me a wine uh, menu and there's hundreds of pages Turn to the waiter and say, hey, I'm looking for a $50 bottle of wine that's very social with my friends, something velvety and smooth. Let's go French. Yeah. And they're going to say, okay, I've got these three to, to suggest. Yeah, yeah. There's no harm in, in talking about exactly what you want to pay for the wine. No, you, not right? at all. I Especially wouldn't. when you open up a, a wine menu and it's the size of a, a cheesecake factory, but you know, like... 17 pages of wine. Yeah. I think just take it into your own hands. I go, this is what I want to pay. Yeah. This is what I like. And if that you have thing. clients, you can be discreet about it. If you're there with people that you don't want them to know how much you're going to pay and you have the wine list, you can bring the waiter over and say, I'm looking for a wine kind of in this area. Hmm. And you can just with your hands circle the price <laughs> that you're looking at. Yeah. And kind of from this region, can you recommend something? Yeah. There you go. That's right. my That's my casual approach to wine. Okay. Well, that was great. Thank you. But enough of your dumb bullshit. Let's it's talk about cheese. <laughs> Let's. Uh, are you going to open this? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Try? So what the? I'm I've at got a uh, glistening bottle of white here. It's sweating quite a bit, isn't it? it? Is? It's cold. I got a bottle of Pinot Grigio, a 2017 Massi. Massi's the house that makes it. So it's the it's the cantina or the house the the proprietors that make it. I always find Massi does good work. It means uh, it means auntie in uh, in Hindi and Punjabi. My Masi is my I think it's my mother's sister. Anyway, it's, okay, uh, there you go. So, it's, so it's your like mother's feel, sister's wine. It's so good. It's a wine that I always I always usually have a Masi in the house. I I like them. If you don't like it, that's my business. Two thousand and seventeen, Masianico. I think Masi is the last name of the people who who started the company, and it's a Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio is the name of the the grape. It means um, Grigio means gray. And the actual grape, the white grape, has like a grayish tinge to it, um, and it's a it, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful white. It goes, grigio means gray. Yeah, gray. Pinot Grigio. So interesting. Sometimes when you give the oh, translation, okay. how it just sounds so much worse. I was gonna make you taste it. I poured a little bit. I was gonna make you taste it. You're gonna drink this wine whether you like it or not. That's just the way it's gonna go. There's your Pinot Grigio, my friend. Let's see, I hope it's okay. Can I sniff that uh, bottle cap? Mm -mm, no. <laughs> Once it's a twist off. I know. I'm not. No, the... no. Yeah, but I was like telling our guests, like our listeners. I'm not embarrassed that I'm opening. How is it? That's lovely. Oh, good. It's lovely. It's exactly, it's as you said, like I enjoy Pinot Grigio and mm -hmm. it's exactly in that space. Right? Good. Good. Uh, would be better with uh, cheese, yes. for example. What's not better with cheese? Well, here's the thing. As you well know, I give up cheese a few months a mm. year. My, my digestion gets better. My skin clears up. But when I'm in the cheese... I'm in. Oh, I'm way in. So I've I've been doing some shopping the last few weeks, because uh, we're gonna go off cheese in September. Oh, right. <laughs> much to your chagrin, uh, much to your dismay, I'm sure. But right now I'm I'm deep in, and this is my this is my favorite type of life where I have rotating cheeses in Amazing. the fridge, and every day I can go. You know, I had some leftover steak, and I used a blue cheese on my oh, uh, and, and and some arugula just steak arugula blue cheese on on toasted sourdough it's my friend i gotta say i gotta give you a compliment here all right i'm ready all right i think that's brilliant what you did you had some leftover steak right and leftover listen nothing wrong with leftover steak i like a medium rare it's never going to be medium rare when you have it left over no, of course i actually i steam it a little bit with a little bit of water so it just gets tender oh, and so, now it's in your it's in your see family. he knows what he's doing he's not just a pretty face then you put blue cheese on it you bring it new life thank you i'm going to be doing that from now on a little bit of blue cheese on a steak never the wrong move in my opinion 
Never. And then a little bit of the arugula gives such a nice bitterness. And then the toasted sourdough. I mean, what? anyway, listen, we're okay. getting off track here. You could make a sandwich. You could make a sandwich with arugula, blue cheese, some sliced steak, and uh, sourdough bread. And then what would happen? And then I would be happy for the rest of my life. Okay, buddy. I, uh, I not only could do that, but I have done that. Beautiful. Uh, I will do it for you as well. Okay, so uh, this is... Uh, what I'm really talking about here is... Uh, this is for entertaining. I'm talking about making a cheese plate. Beautiful. And a lot of there's you got to de- demystify cheese because a lot of this, people I was just about to say right. that wine and cheese are very similar yeah. in the fact that there are so many cheeses. Mm-hmm. And again, it's about what do I like and then there's also a little bit of like you benefit from a little bit of uh uh tasting, you know, uh, experimentation. Sure. And just like wine and beer People will shave off slices so you can try it and you can be like, okay, I can have some of that. I can have this much of that in my house. I would enjoy that. Sure. Right? And uh, many cheeses, I've gotten to know them because of that. Just little samples here and there. And then you go, you know what? I'm in. Do you approach cheeses similarly to wines in that like I like North American cheeses or I like European cheeses and I don't like these world cheeses? Or is it more like I'm not a big fan of hard cheeses. I like soft cheeses. Or is it... Uh, there's probably some discrimination okay. at work in the back of my head. Sure. Um, definitely, I favor Quebec, France, Italy. Okay, you know that's that's. I just these other guys. I feel like they know what they're doing, but right. there's thousands of people who know what they're doing with sure. cheese. So I'm always open to suggestions. Spaniards as well know what they're doing with cheese. I find when you're making a cheese plate. Okay. By the way, if you're lactose intolerant, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sure there's something uh, you can get out of this. Because I feel like people who are lactose intolerant can have hard cheeses. Goat like, cheeses. Uh, no, is it goat? Yeah, goat too. Yeah. Buffalo cheeses. Parmigiano yeah. Reggiano. I think people who are lactose can sure. have it. I could be wrong. Yeah. That's my business. But um, <laughs> hey, your business might be wrong. But okay. anyway, that's uh, that's for them to write in and correct yeah, you correct with. us. Uh, okay. So cheese plate. Here's the way I approach a cheese plate. You need, in my opinion, you need one soft cheese. Okay. A brie or a camembert, something like that. That is going to be a, a crowd pleaser for many people. So what I have here is a brie. It's called brie d'Alexis. It's a double cream brie, mild, creamy, subtle, a little bit of like a, 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 a wonderful nutty aftertaste. You know, for me to have sat here in front of a plate of cheese and not have eaten the cheese is like the greatest show of discipline I've ever exhibited. Anyway, next thing we have here is a gouda. Yum. Okay, so that's a hard cheese. You also want to have a hard cheese in there, something a little bit, a little bit left of center. You know, don't. Uh, it's a Dutch cheese, right? Gouda it's a Dutch Richley? cheese. Okay. Um, so this is a three-year Gouda, oh. right here. Then we've got uh, sheep's milk. Uh, it's called Euphoria sheep milk cheese. A U E W E. Little pun in there. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. I'll try it, but okay. I can tell you now, I hate it. You're gonna hate it already. Yeah. The sheep's milk sheep, cheese. Sheep goat. Um, Lamb, well, I guess lamb doesn't have cheese, but sheep, goat, uh, what's the other animal? Mutton, I'm not going to enjoy those cheeses. What about those meats? Neither. Really? Yeah, it has a weird taste to me, but I'll I'll try it because I'm not going to be a bastard when you have such a nice All right, well, that's what that is right there. Uh, Then you need a real crowd pleaser. I usually have a cheddar there. And when I say crowd pleaser, I don't mean a brick of marble. You can have that, but you can also raise your... Raise your. I mean, I'm not trying to have the Budweiser of cheeses right, right. here. So I have a cheddar here. It is a one year age cheddar from Balderson. They do two, five, I think eight years. Right. Just my mouth is watering as I talk. They just keep getting better and better. I feel mm. like a cheddar should be on any cheese board. So something soft and creamy. There's the brie. Mm. Something a little more firm. There's the gouda. There's also the sheep's milk cheese for some variety. And then there should be a blue on there. Yes. And people will have had look. Uh, you probably you probably once tried a Danish blue, and you put it in your mouth with nothing else, and you were like, "This is like yeah. an assault on my senses." There's more than just these crazy blues. Yeah. And when you do eat the crazy, but there's a place for them, like a steak sandwich, sure, like with some grapes, like with something in a set crumbled into a salad. Mm-hmm. But when you eat just a you know a little bit of blue, you take a little bit. You have other things on this plate. You yeah. have crackers. You have nuts. You have a, a variety of different things that can sort of cut that taste. I went in looking for a gorgonzola. Gorgonzola, one of my favorites. I love it too. It's so good. So good. I, I just want to say something. You you had um, shit talk some other countries of cheeses, and you mentioned the ones you like. 
I love cheeses from the UK, and I feel oh, like yeah. I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. they don't have the prevalence in North America the way they should. So for any of our uh, listeners in the UK, I love your cheeses from I Stilted to their cheddars to their farm cheeses. There's a Dubliner. Have you had oh, Dubliner? Yes. That's a great cheese. Um, That's a great cheese. Oh, they put some. Have you ever had cheese with? I think they put cheese in Guinness, or they've soaked cheese in Guinness mm-hmm. and whatnot. Like it's like, yeah. They just. I just love. I could like. I'm almost crying. How yeah. much I love <laughs> British cheeses. That's all I need to say. All right. Oh, God, British cheeses. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the queen, and thank you for your cheese. That's all I'm going to say there. All right, so this right. blue mm-hmm. that I got is called uh, French Fourme 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 d'Ambert. Fourme is F O R U F O U R M E. Okay. Like an like oven four, four okay. but with an M E Fourme okay. d'Ambert. So I don't know who mm-hmm. Ambert is. I don't know who. But, his, it's but, a, but any he's, case, he's forming it up. He's forming it up. This is from Auvergne. It's one of France's oldest cheeses, oh. dating back to Roman times. Thank goodness, because that's how I like my cheese: okay. old and miserable, yeah. just like me. All right, but but. but the mildest member of the blue cheese okay. family. Uh, delicate, creamy, fruity, tinge of earthy mus- mm. mushrooms, it says. This is some snobbery right here. But anyway, pairs well with apple, raisins, walnuts, green salads. Okay. What I put on this platter, I put some 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 gluten-free crackers. I put some vegetable chips, some fried vegetable chips yep. here. Some nuts. Nuts, pecans, You could cashews. put grapes, like you said, or strawberries you or can. things like that. Um, can I just say some, an observation? So yes. when you're building a cheese plate, is it fair to say... You want balance. You want a hard cheese, balance it with its opposite, a soft cheese. Sure. You want a crowd pleaser, yeah. which is something that's uh, easy, easily to identify and yeah. find. And you want something that's more exotic that might be if different. you only had four, that's exactly what you okay. do. And then say, that's exactly what it is. And then I had a sheep's milk in here okay. just for a little bit of you know variety. Right. Could have been a manchego. I would but have easily put a hard manchego in here. It's nice that you have a different animal's cheese in the mix so that you have cow and then you have something opposite there. I I'm want everybody say, to feel good. Listen. I want each animal to feel like they, they were, were represented, represented and, and, you know, <laughs> not dismissed. The other very important thing. Yes. I have to say this. Yes. A cheese plate. The cheese should not come from your fridge to the plate to people's mouths. Not everybody knows this. You know, you know Just what Just like I, uh, wine needs to breathe, it shouldn't come right out of right. a fridge. Just like so many things, you need at least a half an hour. Okay. Let this Because real... The flavor of the cheese is much more apparent when it's not freezing cold. It's so funny you say that because I don't think I would have thought, like you say it, it makes total sense to me. Yes, you should be doing that. And I don't think I would have done it. I think if I had friends over, I'd be like, oh, get the cheese out, blah, blah, blah. You careless bastard. I guess. What a horrible host you are. Oh, man. Anyway, this is why we're here. We're here to teach each other. Well, can I try some of this cheese? Because you've been talking. Now my mouth is watering. And and you brought some honey down, which you're, of course, going to spill in this studio. Yes. So if you would like me to drizzle it on your stuff. I like honey. So a lot of people are like, what is he talking about, honey? I like honey drizzled on my hard cheeses. Yes. Uh, It's something that I noticed in Europe that they do. And my wife is a huge fan of honey. So whenever we have cheese, there's always honey around. I love the way you, that's perfect, the way you use the knife there. Bravo. And you cut me the thinnest piece. Piece. Thinnest piece because that's the sheep's milk we're yeah. starting with. So you're going to try right. that. So I'm going to try it without the honey. Without the honey first. Oh, it's a good cheese. Okay, so then it's why a don't good you cheese. Just fucking relax. Uh-huh. That? It's a good cheese. It's a good cheese. <laughs> what do you think? I'm, you think you're dealing with an amateur? Over no, there? I can still taste the sheepness to it, but it's, but it's a good cheese. It's not offensive. But I feel like with honey, this would be very good. Yeah, I let's, like well, it, let's try it with honey. But I feel like with honey, it would be great. I'm going to uh, try with honey. I'm going to see if I can do it without making a. I can't believe how long I've gone without tasting this. Oh God! We'll have po- we'll have pictures on Instagram of this platter and on on Facebook. Do you want me to drizzle any honey now that I've got uh, on, on you your? Know, I just put it on the plate here. I, I can't trust you. To... Oh shit! I got some on the thing. Like, okay, there you do. go. Your plate was not was too far away. My plate's the problem, is it? There you go. That's all you're gonna get. Okay. It was one of the worst drizzles I've ever seen, but this I'm... one this honey is Tupelo honey from Savannah Savannah Bee Company. I don't know if you took a picture it of that. It is an incredible pairing. That right. goes very well. Beautiful, eh? This sheep's cheese, Euphoria, E-W-E, and this honey, Savannah Bee Company, Tupelo. Tupelo? Tupelo. Tupelo? I go like, like Mississippi. Because, listen, yeah. you can you can taste that. I didn't put that in my mouth. You can have as much honey as you want. You drizzle your own. I just, I, I just happen to have it out. I would like to get your opinion on this blue. Yes. And on this uh, breed of Lex. I, I'd like to get your opinion on everything. Okay, you so what I want. I'm going to go for blue. Man, we're really having a cheese party, and I encourage you 
to do something like this. I mean, it's tough to do a cheese plate for yourself. I, you, of course, you can do it, but there, there's kind of like a, a self-hating. I'm uh, doing blue last because it. it's gonna. Yeah, it's gonna but remember, my... it's a mild. It's the mildest mm-hmm. of the blues. Oh, this this brie is fantastic. This brie is fantastic. What I do you agree. think about the skin? A lot of people have brie skin. Brie worries. skin, I have no problem with. Okay. Once you start eating the skin of like a gouda, you're eating wax, and that's yeah. an issue. But otherwise, yeah, no, I got no problem with this. This is the cheddar. This is the oh, cheddar, which you're gonna like. Would you make um, a Would you make a five cheese platter for yourself, Marco? Are you that type of guy? No, uh, I would. Cheese was something we always had in our house. Right. Growing up, my mom was from northern Italy. Is from northern Italy, and um, they had cows, and they would bring their milk to the latteria where where you would bring so much milk and they would make cheese for you so in exchange for your milk they would make cheese mm. so there's a cheese called friulano cheese i know friulano which quite I mild can, as well i can't find that in in the united states at all but oh. you'll find it in canada and it's a great cheese for melting for slicing for having as is it has a mild flavor like you say yep. but it also has awesome characteristics in that it melts well it pairs well with meats it's good on its own it's a very versatile cheese i've often chosen that over a provolone over a mozzarella yeah. i like freelano yeah okay i'm going to have the blue now because mm, this blue is fantastic right oh god it's so good that woman... this is so great yeah you never know. You know, I was I was looking for the Gorgonzola, and the woman said, you try this Forme d'Albert. Everybody, trust me, sir. Trust me. Everybody who tries it loves it. I go, trust you. I don't even know you. We just started talking. It stands up so well to a Gorgonzola. She's not wrong. She's not wrong, She's man. She's not wrong. I love a Gorgonzola. This I love, too. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was paying attention to the name. You said it a million times. Forme yes. d'Albert. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's wonderful, I'm folks. Send you, I mean, this is all posted on Instagram. Here's the thing about that blue cheese, too. You know, we're so inundated with blue cheese sauces for wings and stuff, and yeah. that is the poorest quality blue cheese you can have. Yeah. This here, when you have a fine blue cheese, it's like nothing out of this world. It's it's just the best. What's this one I'm about to have, the last? That last one is the Gouda, three-year Gouda. Oh, okay. And it's, it's quite good as well. I really like it. I'm very proud of this plate. I feel like I've done great things here. This Gouda has a sweetness to it. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to have it with the honey, and then I was like, I don't think oh, I need to. you don't need to, but it's so... Yeah. Dude, this Gouda is fantastic. Yeah. I can say this is one of the best Goudas I've ever had. Unbelievable. Yeah. What a life we're living in. Oh, this in. is a great This is a great cheese plate. I'm not saying that because you're here. I already told you <laughs> that the, the sheep's cheese offends me. Yes. I eat my words because it was not bad at all. It didn't... Um, I think if it was a soft sheep's or goat's cheese, I would have had a problem with it. M- much more of a problem. Sure, sure. And I see that. I don't need any of these no, to you really enjoy don't it. No, you need but... any the crackers. He's pointing at the crackers and the nuts. You don't. It's more for um, visually to just sort of like show people like, hey, man, not everyone can just put a piece of blue in their yeah. mouth. This is something but to sort of cut This is the... what I would do. I would take the blue with, yeah. the, with a walnut. A pecan. A pecan. Sorry. Yeah. Wait, this is, is that a pecan? You gave me. The pecans, and you called them pecans, and then on the bag it said pecans. So if you want to argue about this, that's your business. But you'd be quite stupid to do that. No, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. This blue is fantastic. This, my friends, when you're having friends over, you don't need to spend forty five dollars on a pizza and wings. If you serve a, p- a cheese plate like that, yeah, and your friends don't like it, they can go home. They can go home, and don't don't uh, don't pull it out if you got one of those friends who just put massive chunks of cheese in their mouth. And then they go, oh, man, this is blue. I don't like this. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to eat a small sliver of it. But here's the thing, you too. Animal. If you don't have the budget for cheeses like this, you could make a cheese plate with Philadelphia cream cheese, cheddar from your grocery store, a little bit of something else, and <laughs> grapes. I can't think. I'm trying to think of like a- I mean, you uh, lost me at Philadelphia cream cheese. I mean, that's not what I'm trying to do here. But no, okay, no, you're but talking I, about uh, the improv, uh, impoverished- uh, yeah, Whatever. Anyone, like, it yeah. doesn't have to be inaccessible. Another tip that my wife is a big fan of, you can go to your cheese- Are they called cheese mongers? Yep. You go to your cheese monger and you say, I got 25 bucks. Yeah. Give me whatever ends of cheeses you're trying to get rid of and just label them. And they'll be happy to do that. You'll end up with a, a glorious amount of different cheeses you might not- you might not have ever ordered, and you usually get end up getting more because they want to get rid of those ends. Yeah, and they don't know what to do with it. And they're like, "Yeah, you, tw- you give me twenty five bucks. Here you go. Here's six different ends of cheese." The problem the ends is sometimes there's a rind on the end, yeah. and then a lot of like inedible, not a lot, but yeah. a couple of millimeters of inedible cheese. Yeah, but you can use that in your soups. Throw that when you're making That's soup. Nice. Yeah. Good, good hot tip. Yeah, and hot then tip. 
you can remove it from your soup when you serve it, or if you like it melty and crazy in your soup, like I do, you go nuts. Great. Wine and cheese. This is this is one of my favorite episodes, my friends. I don't know. Taste-wise. You're, you're glowing. But that could all churn on a dime right now. And hopefully it will. <laughs> Put on the blindfold, buddy. Uh, all right. What's in Marco's mouth? That's right. What's in Marco's mouth? It's nothing dirty. We'll be guessing. We'll be messing. Let's find out. What's in Marco's mouth? All right, I've got my mask on. And I am, uh, you're going to be very happy to hear that uh, this is something I can put in your hand. Fantastic. So give me a, let me, let with, me just, I, I'm going to do some filming here. With all due respect, I'm also going to say that I, I cleansed my palate. I usually clean, I usually like um, <laughs> complain that I haven't cleansed my palate. Pardon me, I drank lots of water and I'm ready. Let me know when you, you're ready for my hand. Or I'm am ready just gonna, for okay, your hand. Okay. So, uh, this is what's in Marco's mouth what's for in anybody. Marco's mouth that's in your hand right there. Okay. Oh, it's, feel it. Yeah. Touch it. It's describe it's it. flat and curled and has a um, like there's some powder like I'm gonna guess like a salt. Um, it's almost like a chip. Oh, it's delicious. No, hold it. This is a chip of some sort made from. That's the big question, buddy. Mm. Made from a vegetable. No. Yes. No. And there's so much on it. There's like, is it white cheddar powder on a, can I have one more? Of course you can. Oh buddy. man. Uh, there might be white cheddar powder. Okay. But that's not, what is the, what is the thing actually, you know, what is the, what is the integrity of this thing? Okay. When you chew it, it gets very dry Um, towards the end. It kind of, it's not a yam. It's not a potato family. I'm ter- could it be taro root? Could it be? It's a root vegetable is what I'm going to guess. Oh, man. <laughs> your face. This is really hard. Your face is getting more miserable as you chew and your and your head is getting redder. Is it flavored? Like, is it? It does, is flavored. Is it white cheese flavored? Listen, I don't know where that. Okay. My last one because I get three, right? Sorry, I know you're doing a million things. <laughs> it's a root. Uh, it has it has good texture, good flavor, without being too flavorful. So it could accompany a nice dip. It's got a good strength to it. It has cheese powder. I will okay. tell you that. So it has cheese powder. So vegan cheese powder, in fact. Okay. What what cheese powder? Vegan. Okay. It also has onion powder, tomato okay. powder, nutritional yeast. But what is it made out of, my friend? Okay, I'm gonna guess it is a root. I'm gonna guess it is a Root that has some substance to it. It's not a fruit. Could it be a vegetable? Doesn't feel like a vegetable. It doesn't have too much taste flavor to it, uh, but it does have a slight cassava, taro. Um, what's in that family? Celeriac root. Celery. T- I'm going to say it is a... Oh, you got me here. I'm going to go with taro root, my first instinct. Right, take take, my, off. take my it off. Take it off. It's a protein nacho chip, and it is made with peas, Jesus pea powder, Christ. and okay. corn. And corn. You never said corn, buddy. The pea I really mean, throws Jesus you Jesus Christ. You, you're bringing pea taro. and corn? How am you're I supposed to get taro? How? You're bringing taro into And the what mix. is taro made of? Peas and corn. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is hard. It and then you put other little powdery shit on it so that it really becomes hard. Okay, I never would have got that. I I, I concede. <laughs> Very difficult. Okay. Very difficult. It's good, though. Yeah, They're really good. That. That not bad. Oh, not bad. man. Huh? Pea Both and corn. Chip? Shit, corn makes sense. <laughs> it's It tastes like a like a um, Mexican uh, tortilla. Like, it has that corn. I can feel it. All right. Oh, okay, I'm going to... All right, so that's sorry. I'm just gonna eat cheese now with it. I forgot we were still taping. All right, so I lost that, but I will say this was one of my favorite episodes, my friend. Really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Thank you. And right now, this studio smells like ass and foot, and the two of us could not be happy. No, it's true. This it's is what true. cheese does to you. You yeah. just forget that this is like. Have you ever, you know, 
held up your shoe and we're like oh man the smell i right. got to i got to go buy some you know dr scholl's yeah. i got to i got to buy some baking soda for my sh- something yeah but here we just celebrate it there you go it. and hey, listen if the smell starts to bother you just drink more wine there you go there you go all right thank you for listening uh i will do an episode on how to open a bottle of wine in the future all right so and i'll do we should do a beer episode oh, also I huh? love that. yeah beer pairing with food and we should do a lot of things yeah we, and, and we'll we, do all those yeah. things all right until we eat again we'll see you again soon we hope you got your fill of eat and drink with ali hassan and marco timpano Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast Eat Drink. Email them your cocktail and food suggestions to podcasteatdrink at gmail.com. Until the next episode, bottoms up. <laughs>